Kia ora and welcome to the Street Online service for today. My name is Emma and I'm one of the children's pastors here at the Street and it is a real joy and privilege to be with you um, wherever you're watching this from today. We've got a exciting service in store with worship and communion and we are starting a new series in Acts that Jenny will take us through and there is a um, second part to an Acts series. We did one part last year and so if you missed that or if you want to review what happened in the first six chapters of Acts, you can find that on our website or YouTube or any podcast platform. Um, but that is really exciting that we're going to continue on in that today. Uh, but I do have two events that I want to let you know about. They're both in Wellington, um, but if you can't make it, there are a few extra info um, details for you. So the first of these is called The Send. Um, it is a um, event in, on May the 13th in the evening here in Wellington at TSB Arena, and we've got um, some guest speakers, Francis Chan and Andy Bird, who uh, will come and empower um, us all who are there to go out on the Great Commission and continue making disciples. So um, tickets are $10, you can get them online, and it is an interchurch event. Um, it's not, we're not running it, but we, we do love what they're doing, so we do encourage you to go to that um, if you do live in Wellington. If you don't, there are a few other uh, events around the country, so have a look at that. And then second, we've got a family seminar on June 22nd. It's a day event. We've got Richard Black from Mine Health who will be um, coming to the street. And whilst this is a family seminar, you don't have to have kids or you don't have to be a grandparent or anything to come along. It will be a really valuable um, day where Rich is going to talk to us about having those hard, niggly conversations about how to stay strong in your faith and your views when there's tricky conversations while still being um, open and um, continuing to have good relationships with the people you are conversing with. So really encourage you to go along to that if you can. And if that sounds like something you want to be a part of, but you won't be able to make it, you don't live in Wellington or um, something like that, please um, email families at thestreet.org.nz and um, Mel might be able to give you some info about how you can join in from afar. Um, we are going to worship now. We're one week on from Easter and I have just been uh, enjoying this week, celebrating what Jesus has done um, for us on the cross over Easter time and the joy of um, Jesus being alive and moving. And so I've been really drawn to praise this week and uh, reflecting on one of the Psalms that um, we spoke of over the last Easter week. So there was a really, really short one, Psalm 117. I want to read that and then pray and move into a time of worship now. Psalm 117 says, Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples. For great is his love towards us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. God, I want to thank you for being alive and faithful towards your people. God, you're really good, and it is an honor to bring worship to you now. Um, please receive this, Lord, with joy and um, yeah, we love you, God. Let's worship together. Bring him all the praise. Bring him all the praise that he deserves. Don't hold back, let it be heard. Come magnify. Let's 
time is now to lift your song is all of heaven sings along singing holy is the lord singing holy is the lord we're lifting high the name of names for you i welcome in this place build your throne upon our praise build your throne upon our praise bring him all bring him all the praise that he deserves don't know back let it be heard come magnify Christ, holy, 
that we have um, just been singing. This is another way to worship our Lord. So we um, have juice here is a symbol of Jesus' blood that was um, shed for us on the cross and the bread, a symbol of his body that was broken for us. And um, they're not symbols that were just made up by um, someone there from the Bible directly. Let me read to you from the book of Luke about this first... Um, time that these symbols were used and um, takes place at the Last Supper. So I'll read just a couple of verses from Luke chapter 22, uh, starting with verse 14. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And then he took the bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. And at that point, the disciples didn't really know what was going to happen. Um, but we are fortunate and blessed to live in this um, time after the cross, so many years that we can look back and know what Jesus was really talking about in those verses. And so now we've got um, the juice and the bread is um, obedience of Jesus asking us to do this, but also in remembrance. We take time to remember that really sacred event and what it means, and also in celebration that one day Jesus will be returning and will share in this meal with us again. So if you have your juice and crackers or bread at home, I just invite you to join now in communion. Then 
Welcome to our brand new series in the second section of Acts um, that we're calling Scattered. You may remember last year we covered um, from chapter one of Acts to chapter six of Acts in a series that we called Empowered. And now we move on to this next section. And Acts is an incredibly exciting book of the Bible Um, As it looks at the birth of the church, we get to look closely at these brand new early followers of Jesus and we discover what they did, what they prioritised, how they spoke and acted, what they were called to do and how God used them to make disciples. And the exciting thing is, even though we are thousands of years later, we are still being asked by Jesus to do the same things, to act and speak in the same way, to prioritise the same things and to live out this mission that Jesus has called all his followers to, to go and make disciples of all nations. Or as we have reworded it here at the street, to help people become total followers of Jesus Christ. And so just as I was excited about Acts part one, Empowered, I'm so excited as we begin Acts part two because I can't help imagining what might happen if we took the words that we read here seriously. To imagine what would happen if we allow the Holy Spirit to empower and to mobilise us. You know, what might be possible if that were to take place. And that is my prayer for this series, that that would be exactly what happens, that we would take these words to heart and we would allow the Holy Spirit to empower and lead us um, to make disciples. In the Empowered series, we learned about all the ways that the Holy Spirit empowered those early believers and birthed the church through them. We We learned about the power of the Holy Spirit that he fills us with. We learned about the message of salvation that he's given us to spread. We learned about an empowered devotion to God and to one another. We heard about empowered miracles. You might remember Jerem talking about us doing the Jesus stuff. We heard that God makes a way for the message of Jesus to be shared, even in the midst of persecution, and that we are called to pray like it matters. Big prayers, small prayers, and specific prayers. We learnt about what Holy Spirit-empowered community looks like and perseverance and wisdom. The overriding message left in my mind after that series was that if we're going to accomplish the mission that Jesus has given us, we need the Holy Spirit to empower us. The Spirit always empowers us for a purpose and that purpose is to go and make disciples. Always, that is always the purpose that he has for us. And so we can't move on to this next section of Acts where the believers are persecuted and scattered without being empowered. And so I'd encourage you to look over that first series, whether you saw it or listened to it or watched it or didn't, um, look back over it, remind yourself of the messages. They're all on the website. You can get them really easily. I looked through them and I remembered things that I'd been challenged about, that God had changed in my life, that, you know, things that I was convicted to start doing and stop doing. And um, maybe I've been distracted or forgotten some of those things. And it was so good to look back and remember what God had been doing in me. So let's begin this next series from a base of being empowered by the Spirit. Otherwise, this just ends up as an empty list of things to do rather than the life that we're called to live as children of God, filled and empowered by the Holy Spirit. So this series, um, Scattered, kicks off in Acts um, chapter 6, verse 8. And in case you can't remember back to last year and what had happened just before these verses, let me remind you of where we are. So the church was growing, the number of disciples was increasing, and the work that used to be achievable for the apostles to do was now becoming unachievable. A group called the Hellenistic Jews were complaining that their widows were being overlooked in the distribution of food. 
And so the apostles concluded that they needed to continue with the work that God had um, anointed them and gifted them to do, which was to preach and teach the word of God. And so they looked for men who were known to be full of the spirit and wisdom who could be responsible for this area of ministry. It's funny because it kind of reminds me of what um, we're doing right now across the street as we are raising up leadership teams to share the load of leadership across our locations to help carry the weight of ministry to enable everyone to keep running in their lanes so that it's not an onerous thing but a freeing thing to be able to run in the lane that God has gifted you to run in. But one of the men in this chapter of Acts that was appointed, it says, was Stephen. It says he was a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. And so today's passage is about Stephen. So let's read it together. We're in Acts chapter 6 from verse 8. It says this. Now Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, performed great wonders and signs among the people. Opposition arose, however, from members of the synagogue of the freed men, as it was called, Jews of Cyrene and Alexandria, as well as the provinces of Cilicia and Asia, who began to argue with Stephen. But they could not stand up against the wisdom the Spirit gave him as he spoke. Then they secretly persuaded some men to say, we have heard Stephen speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. So they stirred up the people and the elders and the teachers of the law. They seized Stephen and brought him before the Sanhedrin. They produced false witnesses who testified, this fellow never stops speaking against this holy place and against the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs Moses handed down to us. All who were sitting in the Sanhedrin looked intently at Stephen and they saw that his face was like the face of an angel. The way Stephen was living reminds me of how Jesus tells us to live in Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 to 16. I'm just going to read those verses for us as well. It says, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. That's what Stephen was doing. Verse 8, it says that Stephen was a man full of God's grace and power, and he performed great wonders and signs among the people. He was 100% letting his light shine before others. Yet in shining that light, it said that opposition arose and people began to argue with Stephen. It made me think about the movie Top Gun Maverick. You might wonder why, but I'm going to explain it to you now. In the movie, if you haven't seen it, um, they do all kinds of crazy flying, but they fly um, super low to stay under the radar so that no one knows they're there. But at one point, they have to fly up really quickly to clear a mountain. And as they rise above a certain height, they appear on the enemy's radar and they come under fire. Flying low to avoid detection, we would call flying under the radar. It's when you fly low enough so you're not picked up on the enemy's radar. It's flying so that you'll go unnoticed and undetected, the opposite of putting your light on a stand so that it can give light to others. And it caused me to consider, do I fly under the radar or am I courageous enough to fly above the radar in full view of the world? And I've been convicted that more often than I would like to admit, I subconsciously and deliberately try to fly under the radar at times. I want to blend in and go undetected. I don't want to draw attention or deliberately draw opposition. And so I wonder if you are at all like me in that and doing our best to live for Jesus, doing our best to follow him, but without standing out too much so that we don't cause too much of a stir. Stephen, on the other hand, demonstrates flying well above the radar. He was performing great wonders and signs, and he was boldly sharing the message of Jesus. We're meant to stand out, because as followers of Jesus, we're filled with the Holy Spirit. 
The Holy Spirit is God, which makes him pretty extraordinary. And so when we are filled with the Spirit of God, we should expect extraordinary things will happen in our lives. I'm sometimes tempted to think when I read about people in the Bible that they're like a super breed of human. Like, of course, Stephen was doing remarkable things. He's Stephen in the Bible. That's why he's in the Bible. But I'm just Jenny, or you can insert your name in there. But can I tell you, Stephen was just an ordinary man. But the Bible says he was full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. We only come across Stephen because they needed some trustworthy people to help with giving food to the widows. It potentially wasn't considered to be a super, trust, a super significant role, not like preaching the word like the apostles were doing. And I wonder today whether you have ever let your role or your lack of role disqualify you from being used by God. I wonder whether you've ever felt like you're not significant enough. I want you to hear today that Stephen was just an ordinary man, serving God and the church in an ordinary role. But what made him stand out was that he was full of the Holy Spirit. And as you look through this chapter in Acts, some things it says about Stephen um, that stand out to me, it says he was full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. He was full of the Spirit and wisdom. He was full of God's grace and power. He performed great wonders and signs, and the Spirit gave him wisdom when he spoke. Do you know, these kinds of outcomes are not set aside for special people. This is what happens when we allow the power of the Holy Spirit to work through us. And so if you're a follower of Jesus today, you have the Holy Spirit in you. When we live in the fullness of the power of the Spirit, we should expect extraordinary things. But I wonder whether we have got accustomed to the ordinary. I know at times I have. And that challenges me. It may seem daunting for you as an ordinary person to consider flying above the radar and potentially setting yourself up for opposition. But we also learn from this passage that Stephen wasn't just left by God to face the opposition that came. The Holy Spirit was there with him, empowering him and giving him the words to say. But he had a part to play. Here are a couple of things I noticed about what Stephen's part was. The first is he listened to the Holy Spirit. When the opposition arose against Stephen, it says in verse 10, who we are, they could not stand up against the wisdom the Spirit gave him as he spoke. The Holy Spirit gave Stephen wisdom as he spoke. So we have to be people who live with our ears open and tuned in to what the Spirit is saying. Otherwise, we miss out on that wisdom that he would give us. Have you ever come across a family that have a family whistle? You know, a whistle that they would use to call their children far from all around. Like, we were not an exciting enough family growing up to have a cool thing like a family whistle. And our family now doesn't have a family whistle because... Mainly I can't whistle, so it would be useless for us. But if you haven't heard one of these before, they have a particular sounding whistle. It might be a particular tune or a particular pitch. And everyone in the family knows when we hear that, we need to, we need to go to where the whistle is coming from. And it's pretty remarkable to see it at work. I've seen it in um, like a big department store. I've seen it on a busy beach where everyone in the family has their ears tuned in to what the whistle sounds like. And when they hear that sound, they go to the person that's whistling. And just like that, we need to be tuned in to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Stephen heard the whispers of the Spirit, giving him the wisdom that he needed, but he had to be tuned in and listening. The second thing I noticed about Stephen is that he was obedient to the Spirit. The Spirit gave the wisdom, but he had to speak. It says the Spirit gave him as he spoke. These were not favourable circumstances. There was vocal opposition, but Stephen continued to speak as the Holy Spirit gave him wisdom. He was courageous and he carried on talking. You see, the Spirit always empowers us to witness. 
Humans are interesting though, aren't we? We tend to change ourselves to be like the people that surround us. It's called herd mentality. I am a rules person. If a sign says, do not enter, I will not enter. If a sign says, keep off the grass, I will keep off the grass. Unless I'm with others and they do what the sign says we shouldn't do. We were at a conference recently. I was with some other members of staff and we were going to a restaurant for dinner. It was part of the conference. And we got to the door and a sign on the door said, please do not use this door. Use the door on the other side of the building. Well, it was raining and the other side of the building was far away. I saw the sign and turned around to walk to the other door and the others went, no, we'll just go in this way and pulled the door and it was open and they walked in and I sure enough followed them in, even though I felt very uncomfortable doing so. See, this is what we're like, but it works the opposite way too. If you surround yourself with people who exhibit positive characteristics that you want, it's easier to act that way yourself when you surround yourself with that type of person. My pastor in the UK used to say something that has stuck with me for the last 30 years probably. He used to say, if you want to fly like an eagle, stop hanging around with chickens. If you want to fly like an eagle, stop hanging around with chickens. It's saying surround yourself with courageous and obedient people. Surround yourself with the kinds of people who are going to help you be the person that you want to be. Surround yourself with people who are tuned into what the Holy Spirit is saying and then they act on it. Listen to their stories. Seek those people out. Spend time with them. Make space in life group to share stories about what God is saying and what you're doing about it. When you catch up with Christian friends, don't just talk about your family and your hobbies and what the weather's like. Talk about what God is saying. Talk about following Jesus. Encourage each other. Be eagles that would encourage us all to be eagles. Encourage each other to say yes to him and to take steps of faith. The reality is that when we fly above the radar, opposition is likely to come. That's not failure. In fact, you could say it's success. When we put our lamp on a stand, like it says in Matthew 5, or when we live our lives above the radar, we will be a polarising presence. We will draw attention to ourselves. And the enemy's tactics are not kind and they're not fair. Acts 6 verse 11 talks about this part of Stephen's story. It says, Then they secretly persuaded some men to say, We have heard Stephen speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. It says they stirred up the people. And then it says they produced false witnesses who testified about him. They couldn't beat his wisdom. And so they used deception, rumours, underhand tactics They misrepresented him. And this is real. These are the schemes that the enemy has. This is is his language. This is the way that he works. And so the treatment that you and I may receive as a result of our faith is not fun or easy. But we shouldn't be surprised or disheartened by it. Actually, we should be encouraged. Jesus also said in Matthew chapter 5, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. He doesn't just say you'll be okay. He says you are blessed when you're insulted and when you're persecuted. When we're doing something that's caused us to fly above the radar, actually it's a good thing if we draw that kind of attention. The outcome of this opposition for Stephen, it says in verse 15, was that he had a face like an angel. I can only assume that meant he was glowing. Um, I don't know. It doesn't actually say what it meant, but it's pretty extraordinary, right? He had a face like an angel. And then in the verses that follow, he goes on to preach the most incredible message of his life. And you'll hear more about that next week if you come back. Persecution may not be fun, but God uses it to accomplish his purposes. And when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, he enables us to shine in the midst of opposition. And so I have a question for you today, maybe for you to ask yourself 
Am I flying under the radar or over the radar? You know, little old me as an ordinary person, but full of the extraordinary Holy Spirit, do I have my ears tuned into his voice so I know what he's saying to me? And am I courageous and obedient in what he asked me to do? I want to pray for you in just a moment for anyone that wants to receive prayer. But I want you to remember as I pray that we are empowered for a purpose. We don't just um, receive the Holy Spirit for our fun or for our comfort or for any other reason that you could think of. The Holy Spirit always empowers us for a purpose and that purpose is to go and make disciples. And so as I pray for you today, I want you to consider where you're willing for the Spirit to lead you. I want you to consider how am I going to make sure I'm listening to what he says? How am I going to make sure I'm acting on it? Maybe there's some people I need to surround myself with to encourage me in that. How am I going to fly above the radar? How am I going to put my lamp on the stand? So if you're up for that today, I'd love to pray for you. Um, Wherever you are, whether you're at home on your own or with a group of people, whether you're in one of our locations today, I'd encourage you just to, if you want to receive that prayer, just to put yourself in a posture of receiving. Maybe you want to put your hands out or your hands up if you're brave. Maybe you want to kneel, whatever it is that you want to do that will make this meaningful for you. And then I'd encourage you as well, if if you're with people today um, and you receive this prayer, it would be great if you would reach out for someone else to pray for you as well. You know, I believe all prayer is powerful. My prayer will connect with you even though I can't see you right now. But what's really powerful is to have someone that's walking with you in your life to stand beside you and pray with you and to hear God for you and to encourage you on your way. So I'm going to pray for you now and then I'd encourage you, seek someone else out who could pray for you in this way too. But God, we just want to thank you so much for your word. We thank you for the empowering of the Holy Spirit that you don't expect us to do this on our own. Actually, you know how weak and broken we are. And so you fill us with your spirit so that we can do all that you're calling us to do. Lord, I pray today that you would fill us again with your Holy Spirit. I pray that you would anoint us to go and make disciples. Lord, I pray that you would tune our ears to your voice, that we would be led by you, that we would know your wisdom when we get ourselves into tricky situations. Lord, when we face persecution and opposition. Lord, I pray that you'd give us courage to be obedient to what you're telling us to do. So Lord, we make ourselves available to you today. Fill us, empower us, equip us, anoint us, send us today, Lord. We want to go and make disciples. Help us. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. 
we have only one life and we have only one life and it soon will pass and only what's done for christ will last jesus you can use me Thank you for this time of worship that we've had. Thank you for the message that Jenny has brought to us and challenged us with. Um, God, I pray that we will be people that learn to say, yes, Lord, you can use me. Give us what we need to be able to do that this week, Father. Thank you. What a challenging message from Jenny today. And I, I really... Um, yeah, love that question and find it challenging of do I fly under the radar or am I courageous in flying above visible where people can see and learn from me? And that's definitely something I'm going to be pondering on this week. Um, Yeah, I really relate to Jenny saying, um, you know, I'm I'm just me. I don't know if I'd be written about if the Bible was still being written today, but actually um, we have the same spirit in us and we have the same opportunity and we serve the same Lord. So why not us? We can be used in the same way that people like Stephen were in the book of Acts. So I just want to encourage you, um, again, hopefully find that message encouraging, but I want to encourage you that um, you can have that same opportunity as well and you can make a difference in in the world that you find yourself in and that God is not going to leave you alone but instead has gifted us his spirit to um to be able to make a change in our world and so yeah if you don't um if you haven't made a commitment to God you might not have that spirit in you and um, not not awake yet and so I just want to um, provide an opportunity for you if you're watching and you think that sounds like a really exciting life I would like to lead a life like that if you just join me in this prayer it's really easy you can just um, we're just going to say that Jesus is Lord and that we want to follow him and that is all you need to do to receive that, that Holy Spirit working in you so if that's you now I just want to stop and pray together. Father, thank you that you died for each and every one of us who choose to accept your message and choose to accept you as Lord and Saviour. God, we just acknowledge that you are who you say you are and you are worthy of um, laying down our life for. And I just pray that you would um, continue to empower us with your Holy Spirit to be able to do um, incredible acts and have incredible conversations just like these people we're reading about in the early church. Thank you, Lord, for your grace with us as we um, learn and navigate using this spirit. And I just pray that you would um, continue to encourage us to, to be taking little steps towards um, yeah, being, being close and using that spirit more and more. Amen. Amen. Well, that is us for today. I really do encourage you if you want to go back to the previous Acts um, sermons and messages that um, Jenny mentioned at the start, um, you can find them on our website or any podcast platform. And um, yeah, we look forward to seeing what's next in the series and um, to see how God might want to use you in um, the communities and people that you find yourself um, interacting with that, um, yeah, we might be different and noticeable and living for Jesus in a way that is um, so spirit-filled and led, um, which can lead to really, really exciting, um, really, really exciting life. So my prayer is that you would live empowered this week um, and that, yeah, we hope to see you next week as you join us again. But for now, have a blessed week. Bye.